think Donny, it's it's you know it's going to be a huge game. Ulster have beaten Leinster twice this season, home and away. Um, this one's going to be played at the Aviva Stadium. It sounds like it's not going to be sold out, and they're only opening the lower tier of the Aviva Stadium. Um, I don't think that'll worry Ulster in the slightest, but it almost feels like like Leinster should be selling this out. Like if they're able to get a eighty odd thousand people. Are, Croke Park and are able to you know sell out any game that they usually play, then that sort of feels like you know are the fans now going oh geez the season's over like you know we didn't win the Champions Cup and oh uh, yeah you know we'll, we'll see what happens but it, it just feels like all the pressure is on Leinster here and it's only because of a couple of recent results like they've been class all season they're playing really well it doesn't really matter which team that they put out. Um, they've been beating most sides and then they went away to South Africa a couple of bad results they didn't come up to Belfast didn't play well um, should have been beaten by more um, and it's you know it's the opposite for Ulster they're starting to find their groove and like everybody's talking about Ulster playing or Ulster as if they won the game down in Thurman Park like you know just because of the 60 minutes that they had and, you know, going 17-7 up on the scoreboard at half time in full control, Munster playing the game in the wrong areas of the pitch and Ulster had them by the, by the throat and unfortunately the scrum let them down a little bit. But yeah, it's it's an intriguing one and, and one that a lot of Ulster fans up here, Donny, think that they have a serious chance and that maybe this Leinster side are there for the taking. Um, I'm not too sure. The reason being is because I'm really, really intrigued to see what team is going to be announced from Leinster. Will it be the big dogs coming back in, more or less your Irish international starting Ireland team that are going to come back in? Um, I'll tell you what, if I was Ross Maloney or you know Jamie Osborne or whoever that's played nearly every minute of the URC and then it comes to the URC crunch time and you're you're bailed out and you know, the other guys come back in, it wouldn't wouldn't sit too well with me. And and Leo Cullen, in fairness, has been has been really fair to his team over the last two three years of of you know mixing a match and even that semi final last year against Munster, it was a weak inside, but I think all that has to go out the window now, Donny. You know, there's there's no more. Okay, we got to look after this player, but he's been he's been good to us this year. The amount of effort and time that he's put into playing with us in the URC, that has to go out the window. It has to be your strongest team. You cannot feel the weak inside in, in the URC, and it doesn't matter who you're playing when it comes to the playoff. Um, and if they get through Ulster, then it's only going to get even harder. So, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a huge, huge game, but one that Ulster will feel that they can go and give it a good rattle. And when you keep players like Cooney, Burns, McCluskey, hopefully he's fit again. Formick is a Chuk Wu who has been class over the recent weeks, and obviously Dave McCann as well in the back row. It's going to be an exciting encounter. Yeah, he is. Like, he's got a better hair, head of hair than me. Like, that's uh, that's that's the biggest improvement that he's got on myself. Um, comparisons, quite possibly. Like, he's, he's, um, he's very abrasive, obviously quite fast, a good acceleration, um, punches hard in defence, a really good line-out option. Um, and he looks like he kind of like quiet on the pitch though it does all his talking by his actions which is probably a big comparison to myself I didn't really raise my voice at all on the pitch um, and like he's played against some half decent opposition over the last couple of months and you know no more so than Peter O'Mahony at the weekend and like like granted I get it like it's not it's not the be all and end all game last weekend for Peter O'Mahony like because Munster have already qualified yes they want to try and get the win but like he always gets himself up for the biggest games the crunch games man a match against the All Blacks man a match against you know certain teams and big big uh, big games Cormac Cormac had his number all, all day like um, he's a much better athlete in terms of what he gives you with ball in hand going forward and that's something that Ulster really lacked, really, really lacked. Um, and even still, Donny, even still with Cormac playing really, really well, with Dave McCann playing really, really well, um, you know, the second rows went off at the weekend. But Nick Timoney hasn't been talked about as much the last couple of games. But like Ulster beat the fewest defenders at the weekend 
against Munster and made the joint fewest line breaks in that game all season with only five line breaks and they only beat nine defenders. Like so with you know with all the hype that we're talking about and probably Cormac is a two and himself made half of those. Um, you know, by by by, by that. And they've con- they conceded 13 penalties in that game in, in round 18, um, which was really, really high. And their attack just doesn't seem to be firing in all cylinders. So their physicality is up. Their back row is playing well. And Cormac is a Chukwu. If he has another really strong game this weekend against good opposition, and Keelan Doris, Jack Conan, Van der Fleer, Baird, whoever it may be, and he goes brilliantly, he goes really well then he has to be in the conversation for Aaron. None of this here, oh, he has to earn his stripes. He has to, you know, he has to go and, you know, play more Heineken Cup or Champions Cup games next season. And then he has to make the next step and go and play for maybe a couple of Ireland A games, maybe in the odd autumn international against, you know, lesser opposition. Stuff that. That's nonsense. It's nonsense. Get get him in there. Like, and and this is something like which annoyed me about Dan McFarland was you seen Cormac is a Chukwu or Dave McCann when he first came on the scene for like two games and then it was like you no know, he went into the wilderness and sometimes it was like their sort of resting policy and like you know give other guys opportunity here training well and everything else if a, if a player has something about him and he's shown week in and week out that he's capable at that level and he's one of the best players on the pitch every time the whistle goes then he keep playing as a young player, you want to play every week. You don't want to play two games, three games, have a week off, go to Dubai for a week, then come back again, play another two weeks, then have another two weeks off, then play Champions Cup. Like that's all right if you're tagged for a long, like and you've got seven or eighty caps to your name and you've been in two British and Irish Lions tours and you've you know you've all the experience if you want, that's fair enough. But as a young guy like Cormac is a two week, Dave McCann, even even Ryan Baird, in my personal opinion, he needs to be playing every every week. He needs to be high match minutes, um, and to, to gain that experience. And uh, yeah, that that's that's my two cents worth there on on Cormac and and, and where he is at the minute, and and hopefully he gets a, uh, uh, you know, goes well in this game and possibly gets another game before the end of the season or possibly two. But yeah, he's a uh, integral to. Some of the huge positives of, that, that Ulster have had in their game over recent weeks, um, and it's, it's all down to that go forward, um, uh, with with the back row carrying. So yeah, no, I, I can't really. There, there isn't. I don't think there's any negatives at the minute that have come out of his game, like you know, which is which is which is brilliant. A lot of times when you talk about a player, the first thing you do is think about a, a negative in their game. It's hard to think of a negative in this game at the minute. And, yeah, I'm really excited to see how it goes against better opposition again this weekend. Yeah, Donny, I really hope Munster get to the final because I'm going to go down and play golf at the Dare Manor the day before. So, if uh, keep going, Munster lads. Come on, you can do this. We need the final down in Thoman so I can get down for a rattle round at Dare. But yeah, just at the weekend, Donny, I'm actually doing a, a piece for Premier Sports. Um, we're covering the game on Friday night. And it's just looking at how inaccurate they were in the first half. And they played so much rugby in the wrong areas of the pitch. And something that's been slightly different, and more so in the first half of the season for Munster, was that they kicked the ball an awful lot. And uh, even when they went away to South Africa in the two games that they won out there, they kicked the ball so much more than they have done. And it you know, it, it played to their advantage at the weekend. Clipman Egg, there was a really poor kick by Billy Burns down Simon Zebo's throat. He passes it to Calvin Nash, who's in his own 22, and he runs sideways and then throws an offload and it goes straight into touch. And the next thing, Ulster have a line out in the, on their 22. And it's just like, it's just not smart rugby. Um, two or three times around the halfway line, Ulster line speed, come up, smack, come up, smack. Craig Casey got caught a couple of times. Next thing, turnover, turnover. And that is not good knockout rugby. Like that, that you, you cannot afford to give any team in a knockout game those opportunities in your own half. And even the one time, I think it was 38 minutes on the clock against Ulster, and they went one phase, two phase. It wasn't on. And there was a bit of pressure again by Cormac as a Chukwu on Jack Crowley. And he kicks the ball up and he kicks it out on the foot. And next thing, Ulster have another line. And I think they actually got the, in the position then to score that 
that, that try just before the halftime whistle. So there needs to be a, a massive shift in the in the way that they try and play territory and put pressure on the teams through their kicking, not just through their 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 offloading game. And just on that, like RG Snyman made more offloads than any other player at the weekend. There are four offloads he made against the against Ulster. Um Craig Craig Casey assisted in three tries um for Monster to show you how important he is. And Monster made 18 offloads in that game against Ulster. 18 offloads in one match. And so the, it feels like the weather's getting better. Um, you know, Just the, the, the opposition, maybe at the end of the season, they needed to go out and try and score four tries, so they were just willing to, to throw it around a little bit more. But they don't need that anymore. All they need to do is win the game by one point for the next three weeks. And if they do that, they're crowned champions again. And to do that, you got to play in the right areas. So Munster, uh, uh, for, for me, their, their game management, there's been so much chat about Crowley and how good he is of, of, of keeping his team moving around. But like you can't go one, two phases, drop the ball, one, two phases, kick the ball out in the full, one, two phases, give away a penalty on the halfway line. It's, you know, it, it, it's it's not smart rugby. So yeah, keep an eye out for that on Friday night, that there might be a change of, of putting the pressure and putting the ball in behind them and seeing the likes of Simon Zebo, Nash, um, Daly, all you know, putting pressure on by um, their kick chase. So, yeah, maybe look out for that. But I do expect Monster to get the result against Ospreys. Ospreys have a, a big, strong pack. They don't get pushed around and they, they get a few pounds at scrum time. And maybe one area of weakness with Monster is that, uh, around the scrum. Um, but we'll, we'll wait and see. But you fully expect Monster to get the job done at home.